सतो मद्गमय तमसो मोर्गमय प्रत्योर्मृतंगमय ओ शांति 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 Let us offer our salutations to Lord Krishna, the Lord of the universe, the embodiment of bliss, who came to establish dharma and destroy the wicked. Let us pray to Him to lead us from the unreal to the real. to lead us from the darkness of ignorance to the light of knowledge to lead us from death to immortality we have been studying jnana yoga the fourth chapter of the bhagavad gita how lord krishna gave an awakening to arjun who was lamenting out of depression then he taught him how to transform karma into karma yoga after describing the nature of the atman the glory of the atman which is immortal and it tells him very clearly not to grieve over the things that would happen things happen according to the laws of nature none can stop the things to happen so be wise enough to follow your duties in life get rid of weakness be heroic in your pursuit of the goal then in the chapter 4 lord krishna gives the characteristics of what is karma what is vikarma and what is akarma the three distinct characteristics of the karma and these things could be taught only by the supreme lord in order to teach humanity the lord of the universe descends to our level our human level and gives us guidance to follow the spiritual path not get drowned in the uh, samsara means cycle of births and deaths we have been put into this ocean of world not to drown ourselves but to swim swim across the ocean and reach the supreme abode of the divine each one is qualified anybody can reach that abode you know to give assurance and inspire the people who are practicing dharma 
the Lord, out of infinite love and compassion, comes to our level in human form, shows us literally how to walk through. So we say, Sri Shri Krishna declaring, Yada Yada Hi Dharmasya, Glanir Bhavati Bharata, Abhutthanam Dharmasya, Tadatmanam Trajamyaham. Whenever there is decline of the righteousness and rise of wickedness, then I embody myself. Of course, the Lord Himself decides when to come, when the time would be ripened for the Incarnation. But Lord has given assurance, assurance to those who are practicing spirituality, not to those people who don't want anything spiritual, who doesn't want even God and they want to be themselves. That kind of boastfulness on account of utter materialism, such people have to pass through tremendous experience, bitter, bitter experience of miseries in life. In fact, in the recent news I read, in America, people who disbelieve religion is growing enormously. Nothing to wonder. Because people are not given any kind of uh, insight into spiritual glory and nobody is made to understand the play of the Divine. People are totally absorbing themselves in their sensuous activities. So nothing to wonder. But then they have to wait for a long, long, long time to come to spiritual path. Long, long time means births and births and births. One has to pass through. So, that is how the game of the world continues non-stop. The creation of the world goes on. So, whenever people don't follow their duties properly, in accordance with the teachings of sacred scriptures and traditions and take to immoral ways of life. The Divine Supreme Lord of the Universe, the protector of the creation, manifests himself to transform and, in and redirect to back to righteous path. If need be, he even destroys the wicked people who are tormenting the righteous people. He punishes them to uphold dharma. In this verse he gives a promise Whenever there is decay in virtue and rise of adharma, wickedness, I 
become embodied. To be in the midst of people, to move as one with them, to help the needy people, and to help the people who really want to escape from this dilemma. Lord comes in human form. Out of His grace, taking compassion upon suffering humanity, He comes to establish dharma by precept and practice, by the power of His teaching and the light of His life. He comes when the cosmic forces of disharmony rise high and there is terrible unrest in the hearts of people when civilization is being tossed to and fro in wars and revolutions in anarchy and chaos like a car upon a sea of suffering in this verse Sri Krishna enunciates the doctrine of avatar, doctrine of incarnation. I project myself. Please note, the Divine Lord is coming to our level to know us, the Divine Nature of the Divine Supreme. Avatar means literally one who has descended. So the divine descends to the earthly plane to raise it to a higher status, a higher grade of life. So, the indication of Lord's incarnation is the decay of dharma. Dharma means mode of behavior, conduct. When people do not act in the right way, when their conduct is not in conformity with the Divine Law of Life, the Divine Lord comes to restart humanity on the right path. He does not stand aside when the world is disturbed by disequilibrium. He is love personification. He is mercy personification. And in infinite grace, he comes to help humanity and save it from moral extinction again and again. He doesn't stand remote from the struggles and conflicts of people. He's not, he is not unconcerned with humanity's struggle against adharma. He comes to help and heal, to guide the world to heal, to save sinking humanity. Perhaps you have read in Sri Ramakrishna's life, clearly telling, look, in this incarnation, referring to himself, who came as Sri Ramachandra in Treta Yuga, Sri Krishna in Dwapar Yuga, now Sri Ramakrishna in this age, People who have uttered God's name sincerely, even for once, will have to come to me. If they don't take chance of my incarnation, my teachings, my directions, my guidance, such people had to wait for a long, long, long time. So, that's the beauty of the incarnation. But to recognize the incarnation, you must have purity of mind. If the mind is dirty, you can't recognize the incarnation. Take for example, Kamsa. 
most wicked person one can imagine who killed numerous children who killed the babies of his own sister devaki did he recognize shri krishna's advent and to the last he didn't recognize only probably when shri krishna killed kamsa then he got awakened to the reality of the absolute truth so that's the way that's the way so we pay we pay great importance for maintaining the purity of mind purity of mind means getting rid of raga dvesh anger violence hatred all these things you should sincerely make effort to keep the mind free from all these dirty dangerous habits paritranaay sadhunam vinashaya cha duskritam dharma samsthapanarthaya sambhavami yuge yuge i am coming to protect the good to destroy the wicked and to reestablish virtue I come age after age. Lord Krishna says, "This is not the only time. I have come many times because the world goes through the same cycles constantly. It's a continuous process. Very often, adharma accumulates, and I have to come and clean it away. Then everything goes on smoothly for a while." then slowly adharma accumulates again it is like cleaning our houses just because we clean the house once it doesn't mean we we won't need to do it again some do it once a year others twice a year it all depends upon how many kids run around or how gently we use the house this world is god's house and we are all children running around doing so many things that's why he has to keep coming and cleaning up for the destruction of the wicked he comes let us not forget that when the lord punishes the wicked it is for their good he punishes them in love and grace he punishes them here so that they may improve and evolve in next birth the lord's punishment is really the lord's grace I come into birth from age to age. Chikitna says. That means he comes again and again. He is assuring us not to despair. The Sanatan Dharma of the Aryans does not, like the Christian faith, hold that there is an exclusive revelation of God. god appears from age to age to raise man to his spiritual level of life janma karma ch me devyam evam yo veti tatvatah tektva deham punat janma naiti mameti so arjuna o arjun one who knows the divine nature of my birth and actions he is not born again in this material world after his leaving the body 
but comes to me. The Lord's birth and activities are independent and not in any way influenced by sattva, rajas and tamas qualities as we mortals. We are all governed by the three gunas. We are under the pull of these three gunas constantly in one way or other. But the Divine Lord is not under the pull. He is Maya Dhisha, the creator of Prakriti. So though he is playing in Prakriti, he is not bound by Prakriti. These births are created by Maya Shakti and not affected by pleasure and pain as we mortals. These divine births are meant exclusively for establishing dharma and not for self-benefit. Those who come to know this unique nature of the Lord are not born again but join the Divine Lord. That we can see in Sri Ramakrishna's life. Those who were struggling sincerely would rush to Sri Ramakrishna's teachings, would love to be in his company and would be overwhelmed by his spiritual talks. In a way, Sri Ramakrishna uplifted them all. Vita Raga Bhaya Krodha Manmaya Mamu Pashritaha Bahu Gyana Tapasa Puta Madhava Magataha Freed from attachment, fear and anger, absorbed in me, taking refuge in me, purified by the fire of knowledge. That means austerity of wisdom. I have attained my being. Whoever enters into communion with divine life does not take birth again. He is liberated, set free from the flesh. He is freed from passion, fear and anger. He is purified in the fire of wisdom. Jnanagni Dagda Karmanam Jnanagni Fire of knowledge, fire of wisdom. So, coming to me, he enters no more the wheel of birth and death. Such a person is Krishna filled. His whole mind is saturated with Krishna. He enters into the divine life, the divine being of Krishna. Madhbhava Magataha. By constantly meditating, thinking deeply about Lord Krishna, becomes part and parcel of Krishna. See Krishna. He is born not only in a human form on the earth plane, he is born too in the dark night of the soul, in the hearts of his dear ones, who are purified by knowledge from passion, fear and anger, freed and filled with wisdom which purifies. They pass along the ancient narrow path and enter into the being of the Lord. So does the avatar descend into humanity to help mankind to ascend into Godhead. And many have, through the discipline of jnana, been perfected and become living images of the Lord on earth. Ye yathamam prapadyante tam stathaiva bhajamyaham vama vartmanu vartante manushyaha partha sarvashaha O Arjun, in whatever ways persons worship me, 
In the same way do I fulfill their desires. Persons pursue my path in all ways. What a great assurance. In this verse he makes it clear. Whomsoever worship, whomsoever you may worship, doesn't matter. You are worshipping me alone. All the divine forms are my own forms. Lord Krishna tells very clearly. So why should we have any conflict at all? If you are the worshipper of Devi, go on, go ahead. Worship Devi. Purify yourself. Realize. Get liberated. Don't enter into any kind of conflicts. Don't divert your mind. God is so gracious. He has infinite forms to satisfy infinite people. Swami Vivekananda says in one of his talks, I wish each individual has his own ideal, his own God or Goddess. Why not? Everything is infinite. Take any form you want. Wonderful. Swami Yatishwamji, the author of Meditation and Spiritual Life, during his last days he told, well, he began to feel that his last days have come. And all the other Swamis, the secretary, they were all puzzled. Why is Swami is talking like this? Swamiji was made the president of the Ramakrishna order. And they wanted his approval immediately. Swami Teshwanji said, Give me some time, afterwards I will let you know. Sometime is maybe after one month or so. He wrote letter to the headquarters. Well, I appreciate your wish that I should become the president of the order. But I am telling you, I may not live long. Please elect somebody else in my position. Why did he make such statement? And the secretary and the other Swamis, they were all telling Swamiji, we take care of you 24 hours. Please accept. Become the president. But Swamiji said, you are all kids, you don't know. I am telling you, I am not living. And days are numbered. Swamiji was looking very healthy. I was there at that time in Bangalore as a brahmachari. Full of uh, tejas. I was looking like a youth. He would walk like an elephant. Majestic. Really. And he said, look, when anybody is coming to me to make pranam. When anybody is coming to talk to me, first thing would be I would see the deity whom that person is worshipping. I would see the deity in his heart. But now that vision is no more. I am not getting that vision at all. I used to see like that. Any person coming means, I would see his Ishta Devata in his heart. Now I am not seeing. And I meditated upon Swami Brahmanji, Brahmanji Yadishwan, his Guru. Praying for him, 
to give advice whether to accept to become president. No reply. No reply, no vision. So I concluded, my days are numbered. It is true also. When he was taken to Belurmat, hardly he lived for three weeks or four weeks. He passed away. So, that's the way it is. Lord Krishna says, in very clear terms, why should people have any conflict at all? Why the people are quarreling in the name of religion? Why should they do? They don't think. That mind had become dull, dull-witted, stupid, foolish. Such simple fact they are not able to understand. The whole creation belongs to me and people are quarreling about this is my boundary, this is your boundary. And Lord is declaring, I am this Lord of the universe, Jagan Mata, Jagat Pita, father and mother of the universe. Emphatically he is telling, still we are quarreling, creating distinction. So, what's to be done? One has to pass through experience. That's the only way. So, Lord Krishna says, His path indeed is the one path. There is no other. He is the one bridge that spans the sea of sorrow. The bridge of light. The bridge has diverse colors and each is called by different name. The bridge has different sections or stages. Knowledge, Bhakti, Karma are some of the names used by people to indicate what helps them to cross. But the path of all is still his path. The path men take from every side is mine. All worship is sacred. They who worship the gods, that means the minor gods, also come to the god of gods. All worship is sacred. For truth is veiled in symbols. And all symbols express the one inexpressible reality. All manifestations are His. All temples are Thine. Like Guru Nanak sang. Another saint said, O God, in every temple the worshippers that seek Thee Islam and the faith do both feel after thee. Each declares thou art one and thou hast no equal. Another saint has said, Whom the Saivas worship as Shiva, the Vedantins as Brahman, the Buddhists as Buddha, the Nayayikas who specialize in canons of knowledge as the chief agent, the followers of the Jaina code as the ever free, the rituals as the principle of law. May that Hari, the Lord of the three worlds, grant our prayers. So this one verse itself is enough for us to understand the integration of all the religions, of all the people 
in the universe. Ye yatamam prapadyante tam satayu bhajam yaham. O Atman vartante manushya vartha sarvashaha. But the point is, you must have faith, you know. Please understand, without faith, no spiritual life. Faith is most fundamental principle. Without faith, the person ruins himself. Samshayatma vinashyati. A doubting person kills himself. There is a limit for doubting. If you cross the limit, it is destructive. Kankshantaha karmanam siddhim Ejanta iha devataha Chipram hi manushe loke siddhir bhavati karmaja Those who are longing for success in action in this world worship the minor gods because Success resulting from action is quickly attained in this earth planet. It is result oriented planet. Worldly success is much easier of attainment than self-knowledge. Hence it is that the ignorant do not go in for the self-knowledge. Oh, it's all too difficult for us. Just one statement there. Brush off. All do not come to the Lord. Why? Because many desire quick results in their worldly undertaking. Whatever they undertake, they want result according to their own way. If the result is not coming properly, they don't care for God. As if God is waiting for their approval. <laughs> Such people do not rise to the heights of Nishkama Karma. Selfless activities unknown to them. They are not inclined to Nishkama Bhakti. That means love for love's sake, no bargaining. They are not inclined to such devotion. Their devotion is always tagged with some kind of selfish motive. But still, they too tread the Krishna path. For their worship will at long last generate Nishkam karma and bhakti and lead to the attainment of the Supreme. So, in their activities, they become too much selfish and finally they are disgusted with selfishness. and then try to become selfless. So, to become selfless through selfishness, what a tremendous thing. Worship of the gods is not repudiated by the Lord because all gods are His. So, Lord Krishna is assuring us 
take to spiritual practice. The golden opportunity, human birth. Make use of it. Purify yourself. Uplift yourself. Walk yourself. Experience yourself. Peace and bliss. You can experience only through spiritual path. It's only through spiritual life. You can have the glimpse of real peace and happiness. Let us continue next Tuesday. Anyway, please attend all these retreats. Spiritualize yourself. That's the way. Take a spiritual bath. That's the way to purify the nourishing spiritual body. Om Sahana Vavatu Sahana Bhunaktu Saviryam Karavavai Tejasvi Navadhi Tamastuma Vishavavai Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Tat Sat May the Lord protect us, may He nourish us, may our knowledge be fruitful and enlightened, May we not hate each other. Peace, peace, peace be unto all.